how much protein should people be getting? And um, how should they be getting it, do you think? Right. So how much protein you should get uh, depends on a number of factors. Um, obviously, people who are um, physically active, so if you're lifting weights at the gym or you're an athlete, uh, you need your requirement is much higher. So the typical what's accepted requirement of protein uh, for adults is 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Um, most people think that that's too low. Some of the new amino acid tracer studies indicate uh, that that number is is slightly low and that, you know, it's the requirement is, you know, one to uh, 1.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight uh, per day. Um, I think that is what is endorsed by the American uh, Strength and Conditioning Association, uh, 1.2 for um, uh, uh 1.2 grams for um, aerobic athletes and uh, or, or endurance athletes and and uh, one point I think it was three or four uh, for those you know who are lifting weights and you know trying to build muscle. Uh, then you know our protein requirements also uh, increase as we age. So especially once you're uh, past that age of 50 uh, and your body you know starts breaking down muscle and bone. Uh, you need to have an adequate supply of amino acids uh, for your body to uh, utilize versus taking it out of your muscle and bones. So there's been some studies that actually uh, show about 1.2 to 1.3 uh, grams of protein per kilogram of body weight is more optimal uh, in older adults. Uh, obviously, pregnant women um, have a higher requirement um, as well as uh, young children uh, because they are um, and they're, you know, building up their bodies. Right. Yes. Yeah, sure. And what about, um, what's your, uh, take on plant-based protein versus, um, versus animal-based protein, if you will? Yeah. So when it comes to plant-based proteins, I mean, look, you know, societies, uh, scientific societies, you know, WHO organizations will tell you, you know, you can get, you know, adequate protein, um, you know, if you're a vegetarian or vegan from plant-based sources, uh, the sad reality is, is that's extremely difficult to do, uh, unless you are supplementing with a soy protein, uh, shake or two every day. Um, it's almost impossible to, to get, you know, protein, uh, to adequate requirements from consuming chickpeas and lentils and, uh, other high protein containing plant foods that, uh, haven't been you know, purified into, you know, kind of like a supplement or, you know, a, a protein powder form. Um, so the other issue with uh, plant-based proteins is that they aren't balanced in all essential amino acids. So if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, you have to really focus in on what we call complementary proteins. So for example, wheat does not contain all the essential amino acids, uh, neither does uh, peanut butter, but they do together. So they complement each other and those are called complementary proteins. The exception is soy. Soy is a fairly, um, is a fairly uh, balanced uh, protein in regard to having all essential amino acids. Now, uh, and so animal derived foods really have that balance of all essential amino acids. And even within the animal derived foods, uh, there's some new research that shows um, you know, the amino acids from pork, uh, lean pork, uh, not necessarily your sausage or bacon, but lean pork cuts um, tend to be better absorbed by the body than uh, beef and some other uh, proteins. I didn't know that. Interesting. Okay. That's interesting. And uh, there seems to be also a difference in bioavailability of the protein, the plant-based protein and animal-based protein, right? The animal-based protein seems to be more bioavailable, even if you're just go pound for pound or gram for gram, right? Right. So plant uh, plants also contain a lot of, I guess, what we would call anti-nutrients. And we often think about the anti-nutrients um, like phytates and uh, it, as those that can bind and prevent minerals from being absorbed, like calcium and magnesium. But they also uh, somewhat make a protein a little bit harder to digest by the body. 
Uh, and then again, you have that issue of most plant-based proteins not being complete proteins that are balanced in all essential amino acids. And keep in mind, I mean, plants have very little amounts of protein to begin with. So again, if you're not supplementing with a, you know, soy protein powder or shake that's been concentrated, um, it's really hard to get it from the diet if you're a vegetarian or vegan. How do you feel about protein shakes, about, about soy shakes or, or, or other kinds of protein? Yeah, I mean, I, I work out about four, four days a week and I take a whey protein shake um, after each of my workouts. Yeah, okay. Yeah, good. Uh, pivot? Pivot? If we may pivot again. Um, there was one thing I wanted to ask, actually, if we could just circle back to magnesium for half a second. Do you think that the magnesium requirements change as we age? Is that something that people should be thinking of that maybe they need more as they get older or, you know, or, or, or is it just basically everyone should be looking to, you know, take a, you know, have a little more in their system than they do right now? Oh, that's a good, that's a good question. Uh, you know, our recommendations are based in healthy adults and they're extrapolated uh, down by body weight um, into kids. Um, and well, um, that's a loaded question. Um, oh, you know, I, 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 would say, <laughs> you, yeah, I would say there's not enough evidence to really answer that question. Uh, my yeah. gut feeling is that magnesium is so involved in uh, regulating inflammation and oxidative stress in the body that because when you age, you naturally see more breakdown and you know, inflammation, oxidative stress, that there might be somewhat of a higher requirement as we age. Uh, but yeah. I don't believe, at least to my knowledge, there's any studies that uh, support what I just said. Okay. Uh, that, that's, that's, that's a logical extrapolation, yeah, though. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And, there, and there, I, I think it's, it's good for people to realize that there's a lot of stuff like that where you have to extrapolate and you have to take your best educated guess because the studies, you know, I, like we, we always say to our colleagues, right, you you need to know what we know and then know that that ends somewhere and know where that line is, but not be afraid to use common sense to take it forward a little bit. Right. It's very hard to make public recommendations because on one side, you want to be evidence-based and you don't want to promise people too much. But on the other side, you know, we're not going to have a randomized control trial for everything. <laughs> right, 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 right. And sometimes we get paralyzed by a lack of, lack of evidence and Lack of advice in that, at that time is, is yeah. counterproductive. If you enjoyed that segment and you'd like to watch another, click here. And if you'd like to watch the full episode, click here.